unit base. We're gonna head to the location now. So we'll normally get the first mini bus just because, so, just because we need to get the kit ready and be ready to shoot really when everyone else arrives. It's kind of cold and a little bit foggy, so let's hope we make it. <laughs> oh my god, that mini bus leaving. <laughs> I just missed the first mini bus. Wait, I have to check then. Every morning we'll get a call sheet as trainees or camera assistants, whatever. Have to make sure that the, the cast that is in for the day is on the side of the camera so the camera guys know who they're actually talking to. If we get to location and our kit's already inside, then it's slightly different to like get into the location and having to like set everything up. Because we're already in the location, we'll get in and just make sure that we have batteries and make sure that everyone has everything that they need to start the day before the director's rehearsal. Something else we, all, we also do is um, once they finish doing the director's block, we'll move director's monitors uh, so that the director can watch them. Makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> so, plan. Block two, Thank you, Leah. Thank you. They've it, they're happy. They'll start turning. Just depends how the DOP wants it to look with the director, and when that happens, I'll probably be on standby if they want a lens or if they need new batteries. I'll just keep checking certain things, like making sure that the right picture is up on all the monitors. I need power. We just have the monitors for like the costume, the makeup people, so that they can do their job basically and just check that everyone's okay on screen. These will get a feed from the DIT or playback because they're hardwired with you know, a bunch of cables. We just need to make sure that they're in the right place every morning. The aim is to always be as close to the DIT or playback as possible because obviously the closer we are, the closer checks are to set and the better our signal as well. It's B camera only. I did it. Yeah, I like cameras. I think that it's like the oldest form of storytelling, isn't it? Being in the camera department is one of the few jobs where you have to be on set almost all the time. And you don't really have that with some of the other roles that exist. I was in production before and I just felt so far removed from everything. It was like I was just handling logistics all the time. My mum took me Disney World every year. Thanks, mum. She took me to Disney World so frequently that I was like, this is so cool, I want to be an animator. My parents had those like old little camcorders. My mum had one of those, and she bought me like one of those Fisher Price cameras that had like two handles. It was so ugly. It was blue, but it was really cool. And every time I went to Disney World, I would just be there like taking taking pictures. And I was like, this is so cool. I want to live here. Sorry, I have to go. Yeah, copy that. I've got standby lenses now. The cameras are powered by two types of battery onboard and block. The onboard battery sits on the back of the camera. The block battery sits externally, it's a block. But um, it just saves, because we've got so many accessories running off of the camera, it just means that we can power it for longer without it dying, basically. Every camera will have two block batteries, and that should last in the day, unless they're fully just running off of block power. I get to still learn things that are quite technical and I'm always like near the image. I'm always like understanding what makes an image and things like that. So, I mean, there's so much that like, brings these things to life. This show has a lot of, of those things. There's a lot of props, there's a lot of costumes, there's a lot of grandeur. These venues, you would never see them like this. So it's like, you know, you can go on tours and stuff, but when they're decorated to be restored to the way that they were, then you do get a real sense of what it was like. And the costumes are so elaborate as well, and everything sort of feeds into that, that world that they're then creating, and especially like the lighting and everything else that's going on in the room. I didn't know there was such a thing as a camera trainee. I was like, cool, you just become a camera assistant thingy, and then you just become a camera operator. I feel like nowadays people are making their own paths into filmmaking because you kind of just have to. If you're good at something, you know that you have an eye for it, then why would you not just... Just coming back from the truck with the battery on my way. Just just do, you know? Like, I feel like this is one of those industries where you kind of have to, otherwise you won't get in. Mine, thank you. You just need to, to want it. And you need to want it for reasons that are your own and, that, and not be swayed by what other people's 
opinion of what that should be, as long as you're technically able and that you know what you're doing to a degree that shows you're willing to learn more, then you can forget everything else. The moment when I started to like catch on to things was when I actually disregarded what they thought of me, like on a personal level, because I was like, in the back of my mind, like, oh my God, like what if I'm, I'm, I just feel like I'm different? What if I just don't fit in? Having kind of just got in off of grit, <laughs> just grit alone, was enough for me to just be like, well, you know, I deserve to be here. At the end of the day, like I've, I've really tried to get here. Couldn't get a job in camera because it's hard to get a job in camera. So instead, got a job in production, but met a lot of people. That's how I found Pete. I met the day before this job started. When you go in, there's a, on the right, on the in and out thing, there's a delivery note. Yeah. And it's got everything that's in there. Check them out. Open up the boxes and take them out. Oh, okay, cool. So I'm going to go and do in and outs now. We just had some kit delivered, and we also just sent some kit back, which is a common thing that happens. You just need to keep a log of everything that comes in and everything that goes out, so. Ins and outs, basic, basic things. Ooh, we've got a red. This is a red, if anyone's ever not seen it. It's pretty cool, it's just a brain really. And then you build it up. I get to know why we use certain kit. I genuinely then understand what is arts for. Like, if you don't really know what kit you have, then it's, it's quite difficult sometimes when people ask you to get things or to just understand why we have certain things on set, but this really does help. Lay out all the kit that comes in, note down the barcode of everything, and then I'll take photos of it all together that I'm now gonna log. This is the 8K red helium. Nice. Okay, well that's done. Now, head back on set. We're gonna see what's going on. Oh! End of day notes. One, two, three. Accidental record. One well, of the best thing about being a trainee is that you get to do your notes at the end of the day when everyone's trying to come out. Get the camera notes done, put the batteries on charge, get out. That's basically it. We have all our kit in, we're here tomorrow. Notes have been given, I put this back on the B-liner. We try and get out as quickly as possible. <laughs> uh. Bye, Sasha's cameraman. Bye, guys. <laughs> See you later. Cool.